Hey, Lanky Cyclist here. Longtime Garmin user, I started using a Wahoo Element Bolt about a year ago, but I've since sold that device, switched back to Garmin, and in this video, I'm going to tell you why. But first, some disclaimers. This is not a deep dive tech video. If you want that, go watch DC Rainmaker. Number two, I have no affiliation with any of these companies. Number three, I don't dislike Wahoo. In fact, I actually really liked my Element Bolt. It just didn't work for my needs. Lastly, I know there are other cycling computer brands out there, Brighton, Hammerhead. I even used a Lazine Super GPS for a few years, but I'm most familiar with Wahoo and Garmin. But in my experience, most people using a cycling computer are riding with a Wahoo or a Garmin. Next, some context. So, as I said, I am a longtime Garmin user. So, my very first GPS based cycling computer after I ditched the cat eye with all the wires running to the various parts of your bike, the dark ages of cycling, I picked up this Garmin Edge 200. I've had various other Garmin products such as the Vivo Active Watch, a whole bunch of Vivo Smart wearables, the Garmin Edge Explore. Had an Edge 530, and most recently been using this Edge 540 and this Forerunner 255. So if I'm so immersed in the Garmin ecosystem, why did I decide to buy a Wahoo Element Bolt? So it really came down to one reason. Been a long time Sufferfest user. The Sufferfest was an indoor training app. Wahoo purchased them a few years ago. They rebranded it as Wahoo System, which is essentially their indoor cycling training platform. Got really into structured training in the last few years, so I was following along the, with the Wahoo system plans fairly religiously, but I prefer to do my rides outside rather than on the indoor trainer. So I was hard coding my Wahoo system workouts into Garmin Connect, pushing that to my Garmin head unit and using that to do my training rides, or I was using the interval function. There was probably a better way to do it. I probably should have been uploading this stuff to training peaks and then pushing it. But suffice to say, I don't know, it was getting pretty challenging to do those system workouts outside using my Garmin head unit. So when I heard that Wahoo was going to allow system workouts to be pushed from the cloud directly to your head unit, I thought, this sounds pretty good. So basically, I picked up a Wahoo Element Bolt version two so I could do my system workouts outside. And that feature worked exceedingly well. So I would boot up my Wahoo after it synced, whatever workout was planned for the day would show up there. I could just hit start, go for a ride, and it was great. And it functioned really well during my workouts. It was really easy to pause, skip to the next step. I found the interface super easy, friendly to use. It was even easy to use, like if you had big bulky gloves on in the winter. I really liked the, the layout, the buttons, all that was great. I found the LED lights on the Wahoo to be super helpful. Like if you were out on a zone two ride and maybe you wanted to switch over to a map screen or something else, like you could still have your heart rate or your power or whatever it was, like showing up in the lights so you can keep maintaining the same pace. Super easy to set up and use. You don't have to scroll through a ton of screens. You can do a lot of the setup directly on your phone, which I found to be like very convenient. And honestly, I thought my Bolt worked better with the Garmin Varia than any of my Garmin head units have. Seemed like it more accurately depicted the location of a passing vehicle. And I liked how it showed up as a little car on the screen rather than a little dot. It's a minute detail, but I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool. So what didn't I like? Well, there's way fewer features on the Element Bolt. And arguably, you don't need a lot of the features that are on the Garmin. The mountain bike data, like grit, flow scores, jumps. Never found any of that stuff to be particularly useful. It's because you suck at mountain biking, brah. And there were data screens that I had become very accustomed to on my Garmin head units that weren't available on the Wahoo. The other big downside I found with Wahoo was that they didn't offer activity profiles. If you only ride one cycling discipline, you're probably not gonna care about this. But if you ride all the bikes like I do, then this becomes more of an issue. So on Garmin, you can set up different activity profiles on your device. So you can have one for mountain biking, one for road cycling, cyclocross, like whatever you wanna do, and you can set up these different profiles with different 
customization. So you can have different screens for different, different things, different data fields, depending on the cycling discipline that you do. It's a nice feature to have if you ride different cycling disciplines, especially if you upload your workouts to an app like Strava, because it'll take that Garmin activity profile of mountain biking, and then it'll categorize it as a mountain bike ride in Strava. Wahoo basically just has one activity profile, and that's ride. The other thing I really didn't like about Wahoo were that the Wahoo maps did not have street names. Now, if you're riding a course, it'll put the street names on there, tell you where to turn. But if you're just free riding, none of the street name maps are on there, unlike on the Garmin. So it just makes navigating a little bit more challenging. Get to the point. What's the one thing? But the one and biggest reason I decided to ditch the Wahoo Bolt and go back to a Garmin cycling computer was that Wahoo doesn't offer anything comparable to Garmin Connect. So if you haven't used Garmin products in the past, Garmin Connect is their app that you use to set up the devices, but then it also serves as sort of a repository for all the data that your devices are collecting. The data that's gonna populate in Garmin Connect is going to depend upon the device that you're using. So for example, this Forerunner is collecting all of my sleep data, heart rate, uh, HRV, uh, steps, like a whole bunch of sort of like the daily type of health statistics. Any rides that I do on the 540 will also show up in there. And then Garmin takes all of that data, processes it, and gives you some interesting performance statistics. Things like VO2 max, training status, workout suggestions, gives you a whole bunch of interesting and useful performance and training data. Did that ride that you just do help boost your aerobic fitness? Did it boost your anaerobic fitness? It'll categorize your training ride. So was it a tempo ride, threshold, sprint, VO2 max? Wahoo doesn't offer any of that sort of information. So if you care about structured training, or even if you just care about monitoring your fitness, me personally, I've had some issues with overtraining in the past. So it's nice to have some measure of my fitness that I sort of can look at that's objective and I can say, okay, am I doing too much this week? Am I not doing enough? Just kind of helps keep me on track. Now in the past, the training status information was sometimes super unhelpful. I mean, it would tell you that you're in an unproductive state two thirds of the time, but Garmin seems to have ironed out some of the kinks to that in recent years. The analysis seems to be better today. It's not perfect, but it's another tool that can help you train. I mean, obviously you should listen to your body, listen to your coach, like do what makes sense, but it's provide some additional information that can help with your training. And unlike the premium features on Strava or Training Peaks, it's free. Yes, free. In a world that wants to push subscriptions on you, Garmin sells you the hardware and then gives you the software for free. And I, for one, really appreciate that. Now, if you don't care about performance data or health data, or any of that kind of stuff, Garmin Connect is going to be less interesting to you. If you just want a device that's gonna record your rides, that's easy to use, I mean, the Wahoo is not a bad choice. But especially as I gravitated away from doing the Wahoo system workouts, I found that I really missed the information that I was accustomed to getting from Garmin Connect. So especially considering that I've been using a Garmin wearable all these years, and I'm already going in Garmin Connect on a somewhat regular basis, it just kind of made sense to go back to the cycling computer head unit from Garmin. Hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.